What is up guys? I'm back with another video for you guys today. This was a suggestion, probably suggested like a year ago knowing my knowing how behind I, I am in crap. Um, this is going to be one of those videos, I forgot what the, sorry I'm just loading it up right now, but it's by that girl, I forgot what her name is, like Lovely T or something, I, I feel like it's by her. I don't know. Anyways, it uh, she has a name. I don't know her name though. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken hoax. How Victoria Wiltshire's family pulled a fast one. So I remember this girl talked about a haircut. So like she kind of like discusses stuff that's in the news, I guess, or discusses stuff that's big or hot, if you want to call it. So she just kind of discusses stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to react to, and it's going to be a KFC hoax. Um, so like something that's fake. That's what a hoax says, basically. How Victoria Wiltshire's. I don't know who that is. How Victoria Wilshire's family pulled a fast one. So um, I'm gonna put the suggestion here on the screen somewhere. If you guys do want to see more suggestions, comment them down below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. I'm really trying to catch up before I go back full time to work, because I'm gonna be slowing down, of course. But I'll still try to upload daily if I can. But if not, then I'll try doing every second day or every third day. I don't know, but I really want to get these out daily and get as many videos as I can out that that, that are overdue. So without further ado, let's go, guys. Hey, you guys, it's your girl Tina. I want to go ahead and shout out Tina's her name. Edith Law, okay. several people have been sending me this story. I, they I love VT. Told you. Here. So unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you guys have all heard now about the story about the girl from KFC. Her name was Virginia Welcher. She was a three-year-old child. She was disfigured by a pit bull attack. And supposedly, her grandmother took her to KFC, and the KFC employees came up to her and told her that her and her grandchild had to leave because her scars and the way she looked were scaring other customers. So the grandmother took to Facebook. She wrote this whole complaint. The media ended up contacting her, and the story went viral. And folks were donating money and everything else. And people were sending me the story. Kevin Duke sent me the story. VH1 Access. So many folks sent me this story. But if you guys go on my Facebook page, I never shared the story. I never spoke on the story. I never posted the story. Nor did I record a video on the story. Why? Because I knew in my heart of hearts this story was bullshit. Okay? And this is why I didn't do a video on it, because every time I do a video saying I'm not buying something or, or you know, I, I don't buy this story, I get attacked, I get threatened, I get cussed out. Let's go back to last year, okay? Let's go back to Sharmika Mockton. When she came out and she said that some KKK members, you know, beat her ass and said they poured some type of flammable solution on her and then lit her up, I caught bullshit from day one. I was threatened by so many black folks. Oh, you're not shit, coon bitch. And she was really attacked by the KKK. You're full of shit for, for you know, questioning her story. A week later, it came out that the broad burnt herself up to make her boyfriend mad and to, you know, get attention from the world. Did anybody apologize to me? Nope. Motherfuckers threatened to unsubscribe, cuss me out. I had to deal with all types of nasty emails. But then when it came out that she lied, no apologies, no I'm sorry for, you know, sending you that nasty email and threatening you. You know, none of that, right? So then after that, the whole situation came out with Tony, the Red Lobster girl, who claimed that somebody wrote none nigger on her receipt and folks would donate money. And again, I said, I'm not buying her story. I'm not really feeding into this. I, I don't believe this. And then, especially once the customer came out, I said that he didn't write that. And then all of a sudden, Tony was so quick to say, well, fine, maybe he didn't write it. Well, bitch, you told the world that he wrote it. Now you're trying to backtrack? Nah. But even then, folks were going off on me. How do you know he didn't write it? And da 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 da. Sat back. Now it's been proven through um, he went and got a person to check out his handwriting, lie detector tests, and everything else. It's been proven that, that Tony and her co workers lied. Then we had the gay woman who came out talking about somebody wrote, you know, they don't want a lesbian waitress and all this other bullshit. I said it on Facebook. It's funny how nobody can just, you know, go to a restaurant anymore and just tip normally. Folks are writing whole books on receipts and shit. Basically calling it out that the story was fake. And once again, after people ran and donated to the gay waitress, it came out that the gay waitress lied for attention and the story was fake, okay? And then after that, we had the big fat bitch in Home Depot who decided the to lure her ass to the toilet seat. Folks want to know my opinion, and in that video, I said I wasn't buying it. Something's not right. I don't understand. You know, if it's super glue, it usually dries fairly quickly, and for it to really, you know, stick to her, I wasn't buying it. Then it came out a week later that this was all a hoax. The bitch wanted some money. She wanted to sue Home Depot and everything else. So, 
TNT is to the point now where I get tired of all these stories that go viral and they pull at people's heartstrings, and I just don't feed into them anymore. I just don't. You know what I'm saying? Certain stories, yes, but unless there's like definite proof, police reports, and everything else, I'm not about to just donate my money to just any damn cause. And it seems like too many folks do that. And this whole situation is just really, really disturbing how this family got over. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys a news clip now that the whole hoax has been exposed. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my comments. This morning, KFC says there's no proof a Mississippi family was asked to leave one of its restaurants because of a little girl's injuries upset other customers. The family is standing by its story. Michelle Miller is here with new information on the case that sparked an emotional response all around the country. Michelle, good morning. Good morning. Three-year-old Victoria Welcher captured America's hearts earlier this month when her family claimed they were turned away at KFC because of the scars on the little girl's face. Victoria lost an eye and suffered severe injuries in a pit bull attack. Well, after reports of the incident at KFC surfaced, she received more than $130,000 in donations, including a $30,000 pledge from KFC. Wow. Victoria Welcher's story drew national attention after her family took to Facebook accusing KFC of wrongdoing and then shared what happened with the media. The lady came over and she said, as she said if, that we'd have to leave, we were disturbing her other customers, but Victoria's face was disturbing other customers. But Monday, the Laurel Leader Call newspaper dropped a bombshell claiming it never happened. The more and more I read, the more and more it just, it, it just didn't add up. Reporter Sean Murphy broke the story. They said that it just what didn't happen, that nobody who matched the description were there on the day that they said they were. In the days after Victoria's story went public, supporters came to her aid donating more than $130,000. That's but crazy. after Monday's article, the backlash began. Victoria's aunt fired back on Facebook saying, I promise it's not a hoax. I never thought any of this would blow up the way it has. Uh -huh. By Tuesday afternoon, the Facebook page was taken down, as was the fundraising page that brought in donations. Kentucky Fried Chicken and Hannon's Food Service, which operates the restaurant in question, says they looked into the incident internally, then hired a third party to conduct an independent investigation. After looking through hundreds of hours of surveillance footage, they hundreds. claimed there was no evidence that Victoria and her grandmother were asked to leave any KFC in the area. The fast food chain now says the investigation is closed, though they will honor their $30,000 commitment to Victoria, which will go to her medical bills. An attorney for Victoria's family told a Jackson, Mississippi paper that he was disappointed at the attacks made at Victoria and her family since KFC revealed the incident may have been a hoax. He said her grandmother maintains her story, but stopped short of saying it was true. All right, so you guys just watched the news clip. Now, what I find really disturbing about this situation, y'all may not like what I'm about to say, but I feel like the police need to investigate that this poor child is not being abused, okay? First of all, she is three years old. I always question who the hell would have a three-year-old in an area with multiple pit bulls, first of all. And y'all can miss with all of, you know, pit bulls are not dangerous, they're friendly dogs. It wasn't like she was around one pit bull. She was around several pit bulls. How do we know that this family didn't plan this from jump? How do we know that the grandfather or somebody didn't say, her sick of How do we know? It's not like this child is eight or nine and can, you know, comprehend what sick of means or can comprehend what happened. She's three years old. For all we know, they could have had the pit bull attack this child and then film the, the whole KFC story. You know, I, I'm just possible. not buying this. The whole situation does not sit well with me, and I think that there needs to be a further investigation. And I'm very disappointed that KFC would still give this family money after they walked out with 130 grand from donations. They since closed down the Facebook page, they closed down the funding page, and then the media wants to shame the people on the internet for sending threats. The people on the internet are not mad at the little girl. Let's be honest here. The little girl was hurt. The little girl was, you know, attacked. Those scars are not fake on that little girl's face. So the internet is not knocking or attacking the little girl. The internet is knocking her grandmother and her family members who made up this hoax using this little girl's disfigurement to get paid. That's what folks are mad at. And I think for KFC to sit there and still pay the medical bill is bullshit. That money that the internet donated to her, we, we're not going to get that back. Well, not me because I didn't donate shit. But you guys who donated are not going to get that money back. So y'all might as well just chop that up as a loss, okay? 
Let them keep that money. But KFC, what you guys need to do is not give them that money. That 30000 should be split between your employees who have been dealing with death threats from the time the story broke. The KFC employees in Mississippi at several locations because the grandmother didn't even know which location it took place at. The initial location that she picked had been closed down for several years. But nobody, you know, figured that out. It was internet wow. people who were looking at that like, well, that don't make no sense. That KFC don't even exist. It's been closed down. And when she was called out on when she was caught out in that location, then she found another location. And then they can't go to the cameras and see, were you there, May, whatever date that you claim that you were there. You know, I think that KFC needs to give that 30000 to all those employees at their store who were threatened with death threats over something that they did not do. You know, this is why I say we have to be careful before we get so emotionally invested in certain stories because you have a lot of opportunists out here. You have a lot of people trying to get free money. You have a lot of folks who are out here trying to just come up on whatever they can, be it a disfigurement, be it, you know, some type of tragedy. You have a lot of crazy folks out here, and we need to stop just sending our money to any cause. This woman was able to raise $135,000 in less than a few days for this girl. On top of that, a doctor volunteered to fix the little girl's, you know, scars and do her surgery for free of charge. Wow. So her surgery is going to be taken care of for free. The family's going to walk away with a cool 135000 And then on top of that, KSC is still willing to give her money, even though the surgeon is willing to do it for free. That, to me, is just insane. It's bullshit. I feel like the police need to investigate this family because if they can put together this elaborate hoax, make all this money off of this little girl's pain and suffering, who's to say that they didn't have those jobs purposely attack her? Folks are crazy, and I don't put nothing past nobody nowadays. Too many attention whores out here for my liking. So anyways, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. How do you feel about this story becoming a hoax? How do you feel about all these stories over the past few years that I've covered that have turned out to be hoaxes? And then how do you feel about the fact that I was right all along. I didn't speak on it. I didn't say anything. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew if I would have spoke on this story, I would have been attacked. I would have got nasty emails. You know what I'm saying? But again, like I always say, we need to be very vigilant before we just jump on anything, before we jump on any bandwagon, before you donate your heart our money to a cause that may be fraudulent. Always do your research. Always get the full extent of the story before you just jump on it because the media doesn't do research anymore. The media is just looking for a hot viral story that will pull in views. They're not doing their research anymore and that's the Thanks. part that's horrible. This couldn't have happened a few years ago because the media would have been on it. They would have been talking to the KFC manager. They would have been having them full videotape and everything else. The media, they just put stories out there first and then they ask questions later. And this whole situation proves that. So anyways, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. All right. Deuce. Okay, this video definitely has some... Has... I, I have some thoughts on this video. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. So, like, the thing with me is that, like, I don't understand how you can fake something like that. Like, your little daughter, like, your little daughter, like, your little daughter, three years old, or granddaughter, literally has scars all over her face. She has uh, an eye missing at three years old. Like, she's three and she already has an eye missing. It definitely, like, uh, she does have a point in saying, like, why is there, like, a bunch of pit bulls near the kid anyways? Maybe they were just out somewhere. Maybe they, they were just walking. But, like, I don't know. I, I don't want to dive too much into that. But, like, I don't know. Maybe they're on the fucking farm or something with a bunch of, with a bunch of pit bulls. I don't know. Maybe they want to walk together. I don't know if she, if she would be in a stroller at three years old, right? Maybe she's just, like, walking freely with, like, holding her mom and dad's hand. I don't know if she was in a stroller. She's three, so she's still basically a baby. Kind of baby, not really. Anyways, I don't know. Anything could have happened to ha to make her have that injury or those injuries. Um, like, I don't know if it was proven to be the pit bulls. Um, or, but yeah, again, it's like, how did, like, pit bulls even get around to it? So I definitely understand her point in saying, like, investigate the family further because, like, you never do know. Because, like, that's that's the sad thing about how the world, like, how, the, like, what, the, what the world has become into. People faking having cancer, people faking having this, people faking having that. P people faking that someone has a disability, faking a car accident, faking this, faking that. Like, they, they fake so many things just to get money. And it is heartwarming to see like people like really come together, like really like rally right away to like earn money for it. It's great, but that's the thing. Like you don't know if you're actually donating to like an actual cause, and that's the thing that really annoys me. Because like you're literally like donating money, thinking that you're doing something good, and then it's just going to like a family that nothing even happened. You know what I mean? And the fact that KFC still offered to give them thirty k, like. 
I wouldn't say it's a bad thing, but like again, they already got 130k or 135k, plus you're offering another 30k, which is 160 to 165k, and and a surgeon's gonna do the surgery for free, so it's like you don't even need the money in it in, in anymore. They should get the whole 165, 160, 135, 130 all taken away, because they did not deserve that. But again, you're not gonna get I'm gonna get it back. So like they have it now, they have 130 thousand dollars now. For, for making up a fake story and 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 again that's the thing because like stuff like stuff like this definitely does happen like in my opinion stuff like this does happen like where people get like shame for this or shame for that or accidents happen where you actually need a gofundme page to help like someone has like a disability she's about to die like can you please donate money there are real stories like that and then it's really nice to see people coming together donating like really fast really quickly earning a lot of money because it's shared a lot, and then a lot, a lot of people donate when uh, one person, if their resume, donate like a thousand dollars. It's awesome. Be yeah, like one fa one family or person might donate a thousand dollars, and it's just amazing to see how people come together. But that's the thing with how fucked up people have, have become nowadays. You make up a story, and then it gets viral right away, and people don't wait to donate until they know it's true. They just assume it's true and real because, like, they're gonna think, oh, no one's gonna lie about that, but they do. And it's sick, like it's it's great to see people coming together and helping, but then it's like you don't even know what's real anymore. And it's disgusting. It's sad and disgusting because then you waste money without realizing you're wasting money. Like you think you're doing it for a good cause and it's not. It's so fucked up. Anyways, if you guys have any more suggestion videos by this channel or any other channel, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll do a reaction video to it. And yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. So subscribe to Lovely T, subscribe to me, channel post notifications to both of our channels. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Deuces. Peace.